Like the first 20 years of the 20th century, innovation has exploded in the 20 years of the 21st century. While 100 years ago, innovations like the moving picture, the telephone and even the car saw changes the likes that have not been seen, I would argue that we are seeing an equally incredible flourishing of innovation in the first 20 years of this century. Innovation we now have in energy and electric vehicles, innovation in medical technology, and most importantly of all, innovations in the digital world. And with the paint not yet dry on the digital revolution, the speed of this innovation and its impact on society continues to provide incredible opportunities. And just like 100 years ago, the opportunities of a flourishing world of innovation, of ideas and of science is impacting profoundly on the way that we work, play and even live. Just like 100 years ago, in sci uh, 100 years ago innovations in science led to women joining the workforce like never before. So too 100 years later. And just like 100 years ago, when the world faced the Spanish flu pandemic, which killed 20 to 50 million people, so too we are facing a subsequent economic crisis globally. But things are different this time, Mr Deputy Speaker, because different because science and innovation and the digital connectivity of the world can deliver solutions at speed. Just look at the Spanish flu, for instance. A hundred years ago, we couldn't even diagnose if someone had the flu because we had no pathology tests. A hundred years ago, we couldn't do what we've done this time in Australia with COVID track and tracing. And we certainly couldn't do rapid public health messaging. So too with regards to our economic response. A hundred years ago, we couldn't do what the Morrison government has done, which is to prepare through modelling for the future of our economic response. And so, Mr Deputy Speaker, I would say that science and innovation has made sure that our response to the dual economic and health crisis of COVID has never been answered in a more um, rapid and fulsome way. Mr Deputy Speaker, it is important, however, that we cannot rest on our laurels. We need to remain vigilant towards COVID through quarantining contact tracing being of the highest quality and standards so that we can avoid the worst outcomes, which is, of course, lockdowns. And this is so unfortunately necessary in my home state of Victoria. But so too, from an economic perspective, we can't rest on our laurels as the lucky country. For too long, we've relied on the natural resources of this country, whether it was on the back of the sheep, on the gold rushes of previous eras, or the export resource boom of today. We need to prepare ourselves to take the opportunities that a post-COVID world will present. That is why I welcome the recent announcement that the Morrison government has made in manufacturing a new future for our nation through the $1.5 billion modern manufacturing strategy. This strategy will create a manufacturing sector for a modern Australian economy by making our businesses scale, become more resilient and boost competitiveness on the global stage. This strategy will help drive our economic recovery and our future. This is not the old manufacturing where men bend metal. This is the new manufacturing, smart technology driving the way that we do things through automation, through augmented intelligence and through smart thinking. As the Minister for Industry, Science and Innovation, who I'd like to acknowledge here today, has so eloquently put, it's a declaration to the world and to private investors that Australia is not only open for business, but that we mean business. Mr Deputy Speaker, I sit on the Joint Standing Committee for Trade and Investment Growth, as well as the Parliamentary House Committee on Industry, Innovation, Science and Resources. And I'm proud that both of these committees are in taking, undertaking very important inquiries that speak to the issue of modern manufacturing and its future in Australia. The first is diversification of trading partners, having handed down the trading transformation report earlier this year, where the committee clearly identified that we didn't need to just diversify our trade exports, but we also needed to diversify our trading partners. And the second is the inquiry from the Science Committee, which is looking at waste and recycling, so that we can build a modern manufacturing industry that helps commit to our climate change um, uh, commitments for the global uh, for, for, global, for our global emission reductions. It, this is why I welcome the Morrison government's wide-ranging commitment to building modern manufacturing in Australia. And lastly, I'd like to mention several important businesses locally. 
Microbio, that's looking at mRNA technology, Alcidian for healthcare data platforms, and Edge Energy, which is voltage reduction to reduce both emissions. My question to the minister is, how will the government modern manufacturing initiative help these local businesses? Thank you, Mr Deputy Please. Speaker.